total cost out the door with the fees from auction, this 2002 Porsche Boxer S cost us. Well guys, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is that our cheap 986 Porsche Boxster S that we revealed last video is finally fixed. For very cheap, might I add. The bad news is I am a complete ding dong. You won't believe what fixed this car. I'm about to explain it here in just a second. Christian's jacking it up so that we can finish putting all the underbody trays away, put the engine cover on because this job is done. Jeffrey told me what it was and it was not my fault. You guys remember last video when uh, Christian was tied up with other stuff, he wasn't gonna make it in time and Caden and I were trying to beat the sunset and get this car fixed because we were certain it was the coil packs and the spark plugs, simple ignition issue. And unfortunately, as you saw last video, it didn't solve the problem. It ran the exact same. I was pretty upset with the car and we were going out of town. Christian and I had to go pick up another airplane. Check out JR Aviation if you haven't subscribed to that channel already. But we had no space to put the car inside the garage so we figured, you know what? Let's just drop it off with the Porsche experts. Maybe they can diagnose what's wrong with this car. If it is something fuel related and it's the fuel filter that is internal to the fuel tank, we did not want to mess with that. So we're like, let's just give it to them to solve. We got enough budget since we got this car so cheap. So long as the engine isn't bad, that, we'll still make out okay with this car. So I dropped it off. I'm like, hey guys, we already messed with the whole ignition system. We already verified the air intake system. Filters are clean. Math looks good. It has to be the fuel. So they're like, okay, well, you know, seven year old gas, that's pretty bad. We'll go ahead and drain the fuel. And what do you know? They call the next day when we were on the road traveling and they said, hey, we got some good news, but it's not for the reason you're thinking. And I'm like, what? So they said they went ahead and they siphoned out all the old fuel. They put in fresh stuff and it still had the same misfire. No! So they were like, what the heck? So despite me telling them not to mess with the ignition system, they put the car on their lift and they uh, took a look at our work only to find that five of the six coil packs were not plugged in all the way. They were not seated firmly in there. So we were on the right track, coil packs, but we failed the install of them. And had we gotten that right, shoot, we would have been done in that first video. Now that mistake wouldn't have happened with Christian because he swapped those coil packs before. I don't wanna blame Caden for this because I've never done a coil pack swap on a Porsche, so it's not like I knew they were improperly installed, but Caden had never worked on a flat six before. The sun had set, it was already dark outside. We could hardly see what we were doing up there. The lighting was not good, the access was not good. We didn't double check it. When we started it and it ran the exact same, we just put the tools away, closed the garage, and went to go have dinner because we were just confused at that point because it ran the exact same. Had it ran worse, like on one cylinder, or had it ran a little bit better, we would have known something changed. But the fact that it was the exact same, we figured, well, we must have done that right, but clearly the parts weren't bad. But no, this whole time, this was the problem all along. So yeah, yeah, go ahead in the comment section saying we are the biggest idiots you've ever seen work on these Porsches, but, but hey, like I said, cut me and Caden some slack. Never worked on one of these ourselves, and uh, Christian wasn't available. So we'll have you know that the number one JR Garage mechanic wouldn't have made that mistake, so. Oh, spark plug, even spark plug wires. Not a coil on plug thing. Those gotta snap onto the spark plug. Coil packs gotta snap on. You learn by making mistakes, and that was a pretty obvious dumb mistake, so that won't be happening in the future. Luckily, they only charged uh, two hours of labor to do all that, to drain the fuel, reload the fuel, and to diagnose our misdiagnosis. All in all, it wasn't that bad, didn't cost that much. It could have been bad. Some other shop could have gone through a gazillion different things before they rechecked our work, so. Hey, it all worked out. At the end of the day, I'm a happy camper that it was such an easy fix, even though it shouldn't have had to happen in the first place. Anyway, enough of that. Let's button this thing up so you guys can hear it run. I drove it the very short distance back from the shop in this state. It was so sketchy with the engine drive belts right behind my arm when I was shifting. I was like, oh, I hope I don't bump into that. So we're gonna go ahead and button it up now before the sun sets and then we'll get some full throttle pulls and see how it does. Should you have a buyer lined up on this thing already? Yep, I do have a buyer on it, so that's why we gotta drive it hard today, make sure it all holds up and that there's nothing else wrong with it before, of course, we go selling it to the guy. Oh, one other thing, it's not all loss. While this engine uh, cover was off, I actually noticed that the drive belt was all dry rod and nasty, so I asked them, hey, can you slap one on? They happen to have one in stock, and they did the labor for almost nothing because uh, this panel was already off and everything was easily accessible. So we got a fresh serpentine belt out of the service as well.
the final step, clipping these back on, got the other side, and then right here, ready, one, two, three, boom. That's it. Now you just put the convertible top all the way down with the button. I'll quickly wipe down the interior for the little bit of dirt that got in there while the top was down, then we're ready to go. Look at that paint, 59,000 miles. I think two owner, clean Carfax, clean title, never in an accident. Not bad, it's the only thing going against it. It's from the East Coast, so some of the bolts, clamps, and you know fittings are a little bit surface rusty. Okay, let's check my work. Put down this top. Nice. Really tempting to put a fab speed exhaust on this car or make it scream, but like Christian said, uh, we already got a buyer lined up for this one who reached out by email saying, hey, love you guys' boxer rebuilds. If you ever get a 986 boxer, I call me up, I will buy it. And sure enough, I gave him a price and he's like, I'll buy it. We'll save that install for a boxer that we're gonna keep longer term, but we got like six of these things right now and we can't keep them all. So we gotta sell them once they're all sorted out. This car is worth about $16,000 all day, every day with this mileage. Clean title, no accidents. Up to 17,000 if the spec was a little bit cooler. And just some other small things like the caliper paints faded a little bit, starting to chip. Um, the lug nuts are, you know, surface rusted once again. And the air conditioning has a slight Freon leak but I checked with the buyer and he said, look, I'm in San Diego, I don't care, it's a top-down car, I don't use the AC, it's perfect weather year-round. So he said to leave it, that's why I'm giving him a discount. So anyway, we're selling it for $13,500 and I think that's a fair deal both ways. He's getting a good car for a good price and uh, we're obviously making some money, but we're the ones who took the big risk buying this thing from auction site on scene with mechanical damage. You better bet I wanna be making a profit when we buy these cars. And now that it's officially sorted, all the old parts can go in the trash. Okay, moment of truth, are the misfires gone? Bingo! Check that out, no warning lights. Only this like brake wear warning, which I don't think that's true because the rotors and pads I think have enough life on them. I'm sure one of those wires just got tripped or it has something to do with them being a little rusty, but we'll ignore that one for now. Okay guys, so far so good. Man, this thing is nice. And get this guys, heated seats. I mentioned in the last video, I've never seen that before. We should make sure they work. Let's click, oh, all right. They don't light up. Well, he's in San Diego. He's not gonna want that anyway. These later cars with four catalytic converters are so quiet though. At least the early cars with two cats, they sounded pretty darn good out the box, but this, it's just quiet. It has a handle. Oh yeah. Go kart. Getting all the rust off those brake rotors. Porsches. Wow, that was effortless. Smooth, refined. This is nice. Wow. Wow, so little drama. No rattles, no nothing. Should we have sold this for more? I priced it when I didn't drive it full throttle. All right, one rev real quick, Christian. Ah man, so much potential, but so much restriction. I take it back guys, they do work. I was hitting the bottom, which turns it off, ready? High, low, off. Cool, I've never seen these before on a boxer. I wonder how much that was, and they feel great. It's the bottom and the top, and they heat up real quick. Oh, and look at that, our coolant temp sensor repair is holding up. It's reading perfectly fine, and it's kicking on the cooling fans now that it's up to full hot temp. Awesome five cent fix. Perfect amount of speed and performance for the money. Sure, the base cars, you could argue, are a little underpowered, but this car is just quick enough. Moments later. Ugh. All right, I can't make this crap up. We're trying to get a thumbnail, and this random dude shows up. He's just revving his car. 
They just littered all that stuff on the ground. What the heck? 12 seconds later. Do not be like this guy. All right, I have to say something. No. <sighs> hey, you left the trash. Hmm. Out of a... The trash can's <laughs> right there. I mean, what should I do to like make it better? Subtle mods, tasteful mods. What the heck is going on, guys? The trash! You didn't get the trash! Okay. What in the heck was that? Chat, should we be like calling the cops to like pull this dude over to check him out? Definitely not fit to drive, I wouldn't think. He's been there for like five minutes trying to turn left, like. This dude's out of his mind. What the heck are wrong with people? Okay, let's continue. As we are trying to film here, we're gonna do a uh, total cost analysis. So everybody always wants to know what we pay for these rebuild projects here on YouTube, and sometimes we share it, sometimes we don't. A lot of times I stray away from it because for some reason, I've talked about this before, but we always get an immense amount of hate whenever we make a profit on a car. Like, God forbid, we make a couple thousand bucks like buying and selling a car that we worked on, like, oh, that's just the end of the world for some people. How dare you! But when we lose money, oh, that, that's totally okay. It kind of all balances out at the end. Sometimes you get a huge home run. Sometimes you lose a bunch of money. We've been through it all with these auction cars. That's just how it goes. Generally, with the cheap Porsches, though, we tend to make a lot of money. And today, I'm happy to announce that is indeed the case because we lucked out. The engine's not blown up. It didn't require any serious work. I got all those parts, the coils and the spark plug, for really cheap online. I think about 100 bucks all in, all done. I went with the aftermarket coils, which were like $70. I went with those ones because they were the proper size ones for the bolts. The new Buru ones have longer bolts and we, we had the shorter ones, so I bought shorter aftermarket coil packs. That's getting too specific, but whatever. It's about 100 bucks in uh, cost on our end. Soldering costs nothing for the sensor. It was just plugs and coils. That's all we did, right? And a deep cleaning. The uh, cabin air filter, 10 bucks uh, on Amazon. But of course, the top line item, what we paid for this car at auction. So as you saw in part one, we bought it as a running car, except it was described as having mechanical engine damage. Rule number one, buying from an auction, don't buy the cars that say mechanical engine damage. That That's usually not a good time unless you're like an engine rebuilder and you want those kind of projects. But I personally don't, but on these Porsche boxers, they, they misdiagnose them all the time. We've bought now three or four mechanically damaged cars that had little to nothing wrong with them. Total cost out the door with the fees from auction, this 2002 Porsche Boxer S cost us $5,643. So that's a top line item. Now we had to ship it across the country from New Jersey to Arizona. That was $1,350. What is that? Uh, $59.93 we're up to. Okay, plus our $100. So am I really gonna do all this in my head? $59.93, so $6,093. Oh, plus the $10 for the filter. So $6,103 plus, of course, the shop invoice. Like I said, it was only a few hours, but if you guys want the exact breakdown. So they diagnosed AC not working. I thought maybe it was the compressor, but it ended up being a leak in the condenser. So that was just one hour of labor. And then of course they had to drain the fuel system, refill it, 250 bucks there. They also noticed the fuel cap was starting to crack, so they put a new fuel cap on. Plus after that, when the problem wasn't solved, they had to go figure out, okay, what is actually wrong with it? Thank goodness they figured it out within one hour. So just one additional hour of labor, $199.50. Thank goodness they could see that the coil packs were sticking out just a little too far and they just went pop, 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 all the way around, plugged them in properly. And then the uh, serpentine belt, just a half hour of labor, 99 bucks, plus the serpentine belt itself, OEM, $70. So that was 175, 44 out the door. So let's add that up. 6103 plus 199.5 plus 215.65 plus 311 plus 175.44. Check that out, Chris, in the total, $7,004.59. God dang it, we were almost under seven grand. <laughs> that means we almost doubled our money. Wow, true. When you do the math, we sold for 13,500. That means a profit of $6,496 and another Porsche Boxster saved. But wait, there's more. If you stuck around till the end, we got a little treat for you guys. Check this out. Our buddy just picked this up. This thing is so sick. This is like Porsche goals. We're always going for the $5,000 like budget Porsches. 
This, even though it's a really good bang for the buck car and like a sweet deal, it's not a $5,000 Porsche, let's say. But. Check it out. So six speed manual, 997, 911 turbo coupe with an exhaust. I think it's got high flow cats and a tune. BBS wheels. Oh yeah, the BBS wheels, black on black on black. This is sick. Wow. Oh man. So of course we have one, but it's not a manual. So this is like goals right here. This is like on the list for every hardcore car enthusiast. It's tough not to like a 997, especially one that's nicely modded, tastefully modded all the way around. Yes, it's a high mileage queen, but that means you can drive it and not worry about the stupid mileage depreciation. And at the end of the day, it's gonna be at the lower end of the market, but like it's not gonna dip much lower. I think he got a great deal, a lot of car for the money. Yeah, all right, straight fight that. But that's no load, so I wanna hear it actually on the road. What would you guys take? 10 budget Boxsters or one 997 Turbo 911? Comment down below if you want a full video on that 997 Turbo. That would be super fun to do a full review on. Another Boxster saved. That's true. Dang, this thing is clean. That's what I'm saying. Dodged another big bullet. This could have easily been like serious engine damage, but no, it was $75 coil packs. Woo! Lucked out. Comment down below if 13,500 is a fair price for this car. If you would have paid that, if you would have bought this thing from auction and taken the risk. I don't want to hear people flaming us in the comments for making a profit on this car. Yeah, we got lucky, all right? Somebody had to make a profit. And it was a charity sale, so all the money ended up going to charity. So I love doing those purchases because even if we lose money, it's like, well, at least it went to a good cause. So you guys go, hope you enjoyed this one. We will see you guys in the next Cheap Porsche series and hopefully it's another home run. On the bright side, that's the beauty of a boxer. You can go through all the gears and not worry about speed. That it feels right.